So we're now going to show uh, some forms of carding and preparing washed fibre. Um, this is a washed fleece. Uh, it's a um, Romney Finn uh, cross, and it's um, and it's been thoroughly washed. When you're drum carding washed fibre, you do need to wash it. You don't put greasy fibre on your drum carder. So let's talk a little bit about drum carders. This is the main drum, and this is what they call is the liquor in. Every drum carder is a little bit different. Some drum carders feed in from lower down here. Um, this drum carder feeds in from the top, and the fiber goes down in between here. Uh, this drum carder has a uh, packing brush on the back. Some of them have it on the top. But they basically all do the same job, um, some a little easier than others. But we're going to mainly talk about the process of carding washed fleece at the moment. So I've taken this, this is just how the fleece came off um, the drying rack that I had. And you can see some of it is joined a little bit together. What we do now is we just open it up and this is called hand picking. So you just open it up and fluff it out and some of the fiber will have been joined together through the washing process, a little bit felted, but this one comes apart very easily. You might still have some vegetable matter in there. If there's any obvious bits, you can pull that out but you'd be amazed at how much vegetable matter will be discarded through actually drum carding it. So I have hand picked some of the fiber here. Every now and again, you'll come through, come um, past some little bits. These are the second cuts that maybe the shorter bits of fiber that the shearer has created through going through the fleece twice. You wouldn't want to put those through the drum carder, so we'll just get rid of those. Now, drum carding is, or well, it is a quicker process than um, doing it yourself or hand carding, but it is also wise to take it nice and slowly because anything done at speed um, with um, processing your fiber can actually cause your fiber to break. So we're just going to lay some teased out fiber here. There's a little bit of vegetable matter, we'll get rid of that. And then we're going to process it through and I'll just activate the packing brush, which is on this side, there we go. And we're just basically going to process it through. You can see the fiber has been taken down and is now being placed across onto the main drum. Now I just do go at a slow constant speed. I don't actually go very fast. It's especially the finer your fleece is, the, um, the more that the slower that you should card. Um, there is a little bit of pressure put on the fiber as it transfers from the liquor in onto the drum. And if you're going too fast with very fine fiber, you might well um, break the fiber. So this is just a process now of gradually filling up my drum and you can see that it's filling up the drum because you can see the fiber stretching across the doffing area here and so I'm just going to carry on processing this fiber and the next time you see it I will have filled up my drum. So as you can see the drum is a little fuller than we had last time and I'm just teasing out the last of the fiber for this particular bat. And what you'll see is 
the fibre starts to collect on what we call the liquor in and it doesn't seem to transfer over to the main drum as efficiently as it did in the early days of drumming, uh, of carding the drum. And so that really means that we've got enough. And let's have a look here as well. So when we have a look here, and this was that doffing channel that we looked at before, now it's quite full and the fibre is almost level with the times. You could possibly say I could get a little bit more on here because you can see the times poking out. But I think really we've, um, we've filled it up enough. So now I'm going to take it off the drum. Every um, carder is a little bit different. This one has wooden or bamboo sides to the drum. So I don't, I don't leverage off those. Um, I tend to take small amounts with the doffing stick and lever up from the doffing channel itself. So just parting the fiber and working your way along the doffing channel. If you've got mixed fibers in, and we will show you how to do a mixed fiber bat, you, it's even more important, especially if you've got silk in there, to take small sections because silk is very strong and it can actually bend the tines if you pull, try to pull too much. That sound in the background is my dog drinking water. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So we've parted the fibre and we've got a nice clear channel here. With some of your um, dr uh, drum carders, you'll have a packing brush, so we'll release the packing brush. And now what we're going to do is grab hold of the fibre on the right hand side as I'm looking at it. So not on the liquor inside, on the other side. And we're going to hold it like a ponytail and pull in one action and as we pull the um, handle around in the opposite direction we'll be able to pull off the fiber really well you can see I've packed a lot of fiber on and it's coming off the drum very easily okay just a few little bits hanging off the end there we'll get rid of those all right and here is the bat and it's been passed through once. So we need to make some decisions now. If we're going to leave the bat as um, a, what would we call it? I suppose it's a semi-worsted um, preparation because in a sense, all the fibers are going the uh, same direction, but it's certainly not a true worsted. But if we're going to leave it like that, we need to have a look into the light. Now, if I put it up into the light, I'll be able to see that there are still quite a few lumps and bumps in there. There are fibers that have, whilst they've gone through the drum, they haven't actually um, carded out. So I'm going to put this fiber through again. And to do that, I'm going to just tear a strip off the side of the bat like that and open that up. Now we can start to see that there are some little lumps in there. These lumps will be just short bits, maybe second cuts from the shearer. And we don't want those in our bat. So it's a good idea to just go through and pick those bits out, toss them aside so that they don't. And you'll be able to feel with your fingers here, I can feel quite a lump when I pull that out, yes, it's a short bit. Oh, possibly a lock that hasn't opened up. Yeah, we might leave that in. Let's have a look through any other bits. What's this? No, that's a lock that hasn't opened up properly. That's okay, we'll leave that in. Yep, what, oh, here we go. This is a lump. And when I pull it out, uh, oh. No, we'll, we'll 
pop that aside. So I'm now going to pop this through again. Any other lumps I want to take out? No, I think that'll open up in the second going through. Okay, so now we're going to put it through again. What I would suggest though, is that you just clean off that fibre, off the liquor in. What, what will happen is that it'll transfer over onto the drum. Just in case those fibres are short fibres, and if they are, you don't want them in your bat. And they'll transfer over onto the big drum and then clean it off the big drum so that you get rid of those short fibres. Starting once again with a nice clean drum. It won't take you long and it's well worth it because sometimes short fibres catch on the liquor in and uh, we're not wanting that in this case. Okay, put that aside and we'll start the process again. So this time, ah, now there's a lump. You can feel these lumps with your fingers and then you can have a look at them and decide whether they're going to open up. And I don't, uh, yeah, that might open up. Okay, so we'll start taking, oh, and then we'll engage the, uh, the brush and we'll start taking it through the drum. There's a little bit of vegetable matter. We can pull that out. That Here we go. I wonder why that went in as a big lump. If you take some care as to why, yeah, see it is, that, that lump's not going to open up, so I've taken it out. Just checking for any lumps in the fibre at this stage. And so there's our first pass through, or sorry, our second pass through. And I would then go along the bat and pull off, strip off along the sides hold it up to the light and do exactly the same process as I've done before. Pulling out any lumps that I think, yeah, that won't open up, and that I think won't open up. Um, they can be, as I say, second cuts or sometimes a little bit of felting in the washing process. And we'll just get rid of those before they even go in. Wonderful. Maybe you can pull that in two. There we go. Yep, there's another little clump. I mean, obviously, you can pull those clumps out as you're spinning if you wish to, but. Um, if you've got a chance to do it now, then why stop your spinning process when you don't need to? There's a little bit of vegetable matter, although this is an extremely clean fleece. So I'm going to continue doing this until I filled up the uh, carder to the top of the doffing channel. So I'm about to doff off the bat that's been through twice now. And you can even see from the fiber that's transferring over the doffing channel, how much smoother and straighter it, it is now that it's gone through twice. And even taking it off, 
you can just get a sense that the fibers are opened up and straight. So we'll show you um, in a minute what it looks like when we hold it up to the light. Okay, so this the bat has been taken off and I can see by looking through the light that the fibers are a lot straighter and they are more evened out. There possibly is just a few little more lumps to take out but you can tell that the bat is straighter because even when I tear it into strips it tears a lot more evenly and you get your strip is almost tubular so which shows that the uh, fibers are more opened up when you open up that small section yeah there's just a couple but nowhere near as many lumps as there were before and now we can start to think about what we're going to do with this bat because you've got choices as to what you can do with the bat I, I like to uh, put, at least put my main fibre through twice and this is because it's from fleece. If you were making a mixed bat from wool top you wouldn't have to put it through as many times of course because the top itself has been processed. Okay they're just little, little dots that will open themselves out. Lovely. So now choices. So we'll come back to the carder and I've got half my bat here and the other half here that I've got. So what I'm going to do now is to show you that at some point you can actually blend in fibre. Um, sometimes you might think to yourself, well, this is just a little bit coarse or you just want to add a little bit of luxury to your fibre. Now I've chosen some Angora mainly because you can see the difference in the colour. You could blend in camel or cashmere or even silk if you wanted to. It's up to you. So Angora, um, this Angora has already been processed. It's washed and you can see it's very, very fine. The staple length is very short as it is with Angora, it's from a rabbit, so it's more like a, it's a hair rather than a wool. So what we're going to do is now show you how to blend in some Angora onto your, um, onto your bat. Um, so I'm going to put through a layer of wool first, and whenever you're making a mixed fiber bat, you always put on a layer of wool first, because it makes it easier for you to peel off. Now, note also that I, I actually haven't touched the liquor in from uh, peeling off the bat uh, the second time. And look how much cleaner it is. That also shows you that the fiber is definitely um, better processed than it was the first time through. Okay, so we'll get a nice fine layer and you can even see here how much better the fibre looks the second time through. So there's our lovely layer of wool which is going to make it very easy to peel off this bat. Now we're just going to get a small amount of Angora just a very small amount and what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to pass it through the liquor in because the fibers are so short it would just end up just sticking to the liquor in. What I'm going to do is actually draw it on to the bat itself. Now when you initially do it the first time of doing it it will be a little bit uneven and can you see how it's clumping here? But that's okay, because we will have to put it through again. So we put that through, and yes, you can see some clumps, different clumps here. And you could have weighed it if you wanted to, so that if you're making more than one batch, you can make sure that proportionately you're going to put in the same amount of Angora um, into each bat. 
And now we'll put through another layer of wool. So we're basically sandwiching the Angora. And once again, I would, I've, prob, I've got uh, oh, maybe two, yeah, two more passes with my wool. So I would put in some more Angora here, stroke it onto the drum itself. Just let, feeling it, the, the tines pull it out of your fingers. As I say, don't worry about the fact that it's going on in clumps at this stage. There we go. So I'm going to continue doing this right until I've used the other two parts. Okay, so we've just taken this bat off the carda and we've probably got about Oh, three or four layers of the Angora and you can see there are definite clumps of the Angora going through the bat and if you look at the end of the bat you can actually see the layers. So we're going to put this through one more time and even looking at the wall can't you see how much more evenly distributed and opened up the wool is. So once again we'll tear and this time we'll put it through and we'll be able to spread out the Angora and blend it a little bit more. So pop this through, oh, en engage our brush. You can see the ribbons of Angora going through. In fact, there's rather a lot there, so what I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of wool there. I'm just going to put that on the top just to make sure that it doesn't get caught on the liquor in. And we're going to go nice and slowly. Angora is quite a delicate fiber. Now when you get clumps like that, that possibly is not as desired as we would like, you might, you can get other uh, carding brushes where you can just actually stroke that down and we'll have a look at it and you could even um, open it out a little bit on this side of your um, carder and just see how that goes through. And we just found another lump. Well, maybe that's just a little bit too lumpy. There we go. Don't like that. I'm becoming quite picky now because <laughs> I know we're going to get close to the Close to the spinning. There we go. 
where I'm going to make up my mind as to whether I put it through one more time and I think I might I think it's just well worth the process so I'm going to doff this off and put it through one more time and then we'll show you the results so I've just um, doffed this last drafting or carding of the um, of the bat and you will be able to see as I pull it off that the Angora is a lot more blended in now. Goodness me, a lot more blended, yep. And ready really for spinning. There we go, take that away. So you can tell here now that the Angora is a lot, blend, a lot more blended through. There are a few little spots where it's sort of clumped together. Now in actual fact, um, it's a possibility that I could have gone for a finer drum once I added the Angora, but this will spin up and the spinning itself will also blend the fibre into the wool, uh, the Angora fibre into the wool and I think that's going to spin up beautifully and it's become very airy and very soft. So this is the other half of just the wool bat that I wanted to keep aside to show you how to uh, prepare it in a different way. So this has gone through the carder twice and um, it's definitely uh, evened out more and this is just the pure wool one. So we've talked a lot in the previous lessons of spinning in a method where the fibers are all aligned and we've you know we've done that with our fleece and we've done that with our wool top now we're going to talk about having a fiber preparation that's more of what we call in the spinning world a woolen preparation and woolen preparation uh, prepared fibers are actually all crisscrossed and not in a straight line. So you can see when you open it up, there's a sort of a grain line of the wool. Mind you, there are some fibers going in crisscross ways. So this is not a true worsted preparation when you use a drum carder. But to make it even more of a woolen preparation, you can actually encourage the crisscrossing of the fibers. And you do this by, if I strip it down, and then take probably the width of your liquor in uh, amounts of wool, and you pull them off like that. So this one will probably go three times. And we're actually going to put them through the carder this way. So this is how it came off the carder last time. Now we're going to turn it at right angles to the carder and what happens as it goes through the carder they the fibers end up um, forming a little u-shape and bending back on themselves that will make the uh, all fibers want to straighten out and so by bending the fibers like this when they're in the yarn they will puff out the yarn and the yarn will have far more air in it. So let's just try this. Always looking for little bits that we need to pull out. And once again, we'd, oh, we, once again, we will engage the brush and we'll start to just pop the wool into the carder at right angles as it comes through it would and you can almost well I can almost see the u-shapes of the fiber coming through and we'll keep doing that now, I'm very lucky with this carder I don't have to keep it so much away from the edges some carders you need to come in at least um, half an inch each side but with this one it the rounded edges tend to do that for me there we go 
And so I'm just going to continue on doing the rest of the bat in that manner. You can actually see, might be a bit hard for you to see, but I can see across the doffer that it's more of a mesh rather than a straight line. So I'll continue to do this. So we've put through those um, uh, sections of uh, bat that we pulled off and we've put them in at right angles to the liquor in and you can even see from the surface of the fiber here that it's a lot more fuzzier and we can now doff it off and it's built up in the center basically because we were putting um, shorter bits in uh, to the center so let's have a look here and we'll pull this off and even the pulling off is different. Can you see how fuzzy it is at the very end? So these fibers have literally been U-shaped and turned back on themselves. I was just saying to Ivy, you will just end up pulling out little bits all the way through to your knitting. Sometimes. Okay, and we'll use the doffer channel as leverage. Sometimes this can be a little firmer to pull off because of the U-shapes. There we go, one more lump. All right, so we'll pull this off. And this will be ready for spinning now. And it will give us a lovely woolen open yarn when we spin it. Now you might find that it doesn't peel off the drum as cleanly as the other bat did because of those u-shapes they are grabbing on to the tines as we pull them off there we go now here is a definite um you can actually see there's almost like these little rounded arches here of fiber and that's showing you where the fiber bent back on itself the bat itself is quite solid and hard to pull apart because the fibers are not in a straight line anymore let me just get rid of a few little extra bits there and this will be spun very differently, very differently indeed. You'll find also that this type of bat doesn't tear the same way as the other one does. But look how thick it's puffing out to be already. And the reason for that is that each fiber is trying to straighten out. And so already it's becoming very bouncy, uh, very uh, full of air and um, will be very warm to wear. So now we're going to show you the different spinning techniques that we'll do for our two bats. So this is our Angora bat and I am just going to strip off from the side of the main bat. Now if you were spinning say three or four big bats, you would because, because we're not a commercial process and in order to make sure that we're evening out our angora you would actually take a strip from this bat and then you would spin a strip from another bat and, an, and then the other bat and then you would alternate the bats as you continued to spin and that way you would end up um, evening out any inconsistencies. Now I've got a lovely long leader here. What ah, I will take myself up to a middle sized whirl. Just ah, yes, I've got a nice pull on. I can feel that with my leader. I'll build up some twist and then just lay the fibers on, and there they've caught. And let's just the first few meters of spinning with something like this is always a little bit of an experimentation because you're not quite sure what the wool, how it will feel as you're drafting out. This one's drafting out beautifully. I'm not really getting any lumps at all. 
I'm getting some lovely little hints of the Angora every now and again, which will possibly make this yarn. And there's a lump. See, you see, that was just a tiny lump of fibre that we possibly didn't capture or pull out when we were carding the bat. But that's okay, it's gone now. Oh, here we go. So we're now getting that lovely, lovely feel to the spin. And I'm very happy with that. So if you've got two or three projects on the go, then you might want to make a note of what whirl you've got your, um, your uh, wheel on. And um, you would also maybe just like to take some single and wrap it around a card so that you know what the thickness of your single is that you're spinning. And then you might also like to take a sample of when you bend back your yarn under tension, remember, always under tension as you allow the twist to come in. And you would then also take um, that is a sample and stick it to your card so that when you come back to your spinning and this is of course if you've got two or three projects on the go um, and spinners are no different than knitters we've always got two or three things on the go then you've got reference to this this is blended through quite nicely you can see the lustrous effect of the angora fiber and i'm very very happy with that once this yarn is finished um, by uh, washing it um, and setting the twist you will actually find that the angora and it's already starting to do that the angora will actually give this yarn a halo and there's a lovely bounce to this yarn which I'm very happy about looking forward to spinning this okay and here we have our very different bat this is the woolen uh, prepared bat. So we carded it twice, um, just uh, taking it through the carder straight on. And then the final time we pulled, pulled off clumps and placed them at right angles to the carder. And we have definitely got what I call a very roly poly um, bat here. And as it's just continued to grow in volume because, as I said, that fibre wants to straighten out. So with this bat, we can't tear off. But what we can do is we can pull clumps off. And so you pull clumps off or you can work from the end of the bat. But I prefer to work with a smaller amount. And let's try i'm going to take it up to a larger world this time because woolen preparation preparations tend to spin on larger worlds i've got a nice take up but we'll see how we go with that and let's just have a feel so typically with a woolen preparation you allow and of course oh no not a lump we'll just Typically with woolen preparations, you allow the twist to go into the fiber. So just pulling it out and allowing the twist to go into the fiber and you just then pull it out. Yep, and we're starting to get a sense of how this fiber will draft out. Oh, I like that. It's very easy to draft out. A soft spin. Now, once again, I would... Um, you can see the single is quite fluffy and this hasn't got any angora in it. Um, this is all the time the fibre wanting to straighten out. So once again, I would place this on a card. I would place a sample of the single and then also a sample of the spun yarn itself. Now let's have a look at this one when we spin it. So we'll allow it to go back on itself. Now, can you see how much thicker this yarn is compared to the other? And amazingly elastic. 
Now when we soak this, um, it will become even more tubular because we're actually, to ply it, we're actually going to take it down to a smaller whirl. And that's what you do with woolen preparations. You spin it on a larger whirl and ply it on a smaller whirl. The angle of the twist will be greater. So let's just roll this and give it a mock trial of that. There we go. So the angle of the twist will be greater. And in some cases, when we've finished off the yarn by in the hot water, um, you won't actually be able to see the plies and it will become even more bouncier and very tubular. Consequently, very warm and very light, very light, perfect for headwear um, or, or scarves, very warm, soft scarves doesn't wear quite as well doesn't wear quite as well but certainly is lovely and light and uh, warm so this time we're going to make a bat out of some hand dyed top and um, we call this basically a mixed fiber bat um, as you can see this top has been as I said hand dyed I love the variations of colours that you get in hand dye top where different sort of dyes have grabbed onto the fibre. So you don't get that flat effect that you get with commercial dyes and it gives this a lovely variegated look uh, to the bat and then of course consequently to the yarn. So this particular top was a, um, a mixed fibre, uh, sorry, um, uh, more of a... Um, crossbred uh, made out of crossbred uh, fleece and then this one is a more of a merino and it's got some lovely different shading in here so we'll be able to put that in then this particular top had some flecks of cotton through it and they have they've taken up it was gray and this uh, and yes and I remembering now this was actually gray when I dyed it so you can over dye your coloured top and that will give you um, some real depths and some muting um, of the shades. Now we can also add in um, some silk. So I've got some silk here that's been dyed, different colours, and you can uh, add in some colours that are sort of going to harmonise with your wool fibre. Got even a bit of bling there. Um, or you can also add in a little bit of a contrast colour, which can look really nice when you start to uh, spin it. So what we're going to do now, um, and of course the, the fun thing about doing these is that they, you make your batch your first go through because the top is all washed and clean and aligned and you don't have to uh, start to um, Put your fiber through two or three times so let's get as we've done before our first layer of wool onto the drum opening up our top here and we'll get our first layer onto the drum so that when we peel it off it peels off nicely so you would never start off with your silks on that first layer so there's our lovely colour that's gone through first. Maybe now we can start to build up a little bit of interest by putting down some colour, uh, a paler shade on the outside. Maybe a third of the way through. And the good thing about that, well, the one thing that you need to take into consideration here is that you don't actually want to blend the colours too much because the more you blend it, the more homogenous your yarn will become. So you do want certain blocks of the colour uh, in one space or in one um, portion of your bat. I think we'll put something over on this side now. 
And now that we've got a good layer of the wool and some different colours on, we can start about we can start to think about putting some bits of silk in, just like we did with the Angora before. So we'll take some silk and we don't put the silk through the liquor in, we just allow the tines to take it out of our fingers. Always being aware that you don't want to put too many clumps on your bat and to make sure that you've sort of combed it, in a sense, combed it through the tines because you want it to be a very pleasant spinning experience for the hand spinner. Okay, let's try a little bit of this. Get some of this there. And get some lovely lustrous effects with this. I think I've got some grey in here that would look really nice. This is just... And that's going to look lovely. I'm looking forward to spinning this. Whoops. Okay. And let's just add a little dash of this brighter colour. Or will we? Oh yeah. Mm, well, it's in there now. <laughs> okay, and a dash of this brighter colour. Okay, and now another layer of wool. And we will continue on like this building up the layers of wool and silk. And then I'll show you when we peel it off. Okay, so we've done the final uh, little bit of our bat and we've um, almost filled it up to the top of the doffing channel here. Um, you can always put some extra silks on the very last layer, which can be rather nice. Now we didn't talk about this, Really not much point in putting a huge amount of silk through your bat, otherwise it becomes more like you're spinning silk rather than wool. So you do need to keep that in mind when you're doing your layers. So I, I tend to treat the silk as if it's the salt and pepper of the meal of the wool in the bat. So now we're going to doff it off. You'll find that it doffs off very easily because the wool top is, um, has already been processed and is lovely and clean, you'll find that it pulls off very nicely. Here we go. We are being careful because like I said in the earlier on, um, the silk can, is very strong and can pull the tines and bend them. So we take it off very carefully. We will release the brush on this card and thank goodness we put that lovely layer of wool on first. See how nice and cleanly it is coming off the drum. Nice and clean and peeling off. You can see the straight lines of the wool compared to the other wool and bat that we had before. And here we go. Oh my goodness, I'm going to look forward to spinning this. And as you can see, there's not more, much green on the top of this. In fact, there's no green. We, we've got probably a little bit of that layer of that green that I put in there and then I decided against it. So let's have a look and see how this spins up. Okay, so we have this lovely bat and even as we've Taking it off the card and it's just been a couple of minutes. It's already started to puff out, which is lovely. So we've got lovely soft volume in there. I've torn off a strip of the edge and now you can very well see the layers of wool and silk and wool and silk and wool and silk through the bat. It's a bit like a Danish pastry. So once again, if I had 
four or five bats that I'd made out of this colorway. I would blend them together by just spinning a strip off this bat and then another strip off the other and do my blending that way. So we'll lay that down and let's, what I'm planning to do with this particular bat is I'm actually going to ply it back on a commercial yarn and I will show you how I do that. One of the reasons I quite often do that with a mixed fibre bat is that you get more length of yarn rather than plying it back on itself. And we'll just join it on to the end. Here we go and we'll see how we go. And I'll just check on my wool. Maybe it's a little too large. And... Maybe I'd like, now you might come across some short fibers if, and, and you can see I've got some corkscrews there. So my, my tension wasn't as much as I needed it to be. So we'll get rid of those corkscrews by allowing them to travel down the yarn. And now, oh, that's better. Now we we'll start to and I'm going to do this yarn a little thicker and some the colors will then really pop out so oh, it's spinning really nicely so I'm just going across the top of the strip catch capturing the colors turning sometimes my fiber around if I want to capture something else here I'm coming across some gray and it really is lovely when you're spinning a mixed fiber bat because you have the enjoyment of traveling through the colors okay so let's have a look at this on the even on the bobbin it's starting to look beautiful now I've, I've put quite a lot of twist into this because when you ply back on a commercial yarn, you will lose more twist in your single than if you were plying back on a, a, another hand spun single. Um, when you ply, say I plied this back on itself. So if I do this and allow it to ply back, there we go. What happens is, I mean, it looks lovely, but once again, we're blending the colors. So the yarn uh, uh, becomes muddier and muddier and the colors don't pop out as much. And if we were weaving with this and or knitting with it, once again, that would blend the colors. So we're going to Apply it back on a commercial yarn and try and keep some of these beautiful colors uh, to appear in the knitting and in the weaving. So we're going to ply our, um, our single now and I've got a little test amount here on this um, bobbin and we've popped it on a Lazy Kate. And here is the yarn that I'm going to ply it back on and I tend to ply back on cellulose yarns when I do this method. Um, as you can appreciate, this yarn is already finished and is balanced. And now I'm going to ply in an, um, an anti-clock direction, like in a, an S direction, and I'm actually going to unbalance it by spinning, uh, putting more twist into it. What I found with the cellulose yarns is that once I put them in hot water, they will actually straighten out and accept the extra twist. If I plied back on a woolen yarn, a commercial yarn, then it tends to always fight against the extra twist that I've just put in it. As you can appreciate, you saw how the wool puffed out when we bent it through the carding process, the woolen carding process. It's the same way when you put extra twist into a commercial woolen yarn, it will always fight against it. 
but the linen and cotton yarn or the cellulose like yarns don't do that all right so we're going to pop this down on the floor here bring up our single um, I'm going to pop this little yarn cake down on the floor here and so I've got my commercial yarn my single and I've got the end of my leader so I'll take all three and just do a little overhand knot excellent so now I'm going to start to spin in the opposite direction and build some twist into my leader and I've done that now so I'm going to spin what they call a spiral yarn so the spiral yarns are created by keeping your commercial yarn straight and allowing your single to go on an angle so if we think of this being the clock face this is 12 o'clock I'm at six so my commercial yarn will remain at 12 o'clock and six o'clock but my single and I'll need to just increase my there we go increase my um, tension a little bit my single is actually at around about a 10 o'clock four o'clock angle and I've got tension on my commercial yarn but no real tension on my single every now and again I will allow my commercial yarn to wrap around my single and that just stops it from sliding up and down so I keep my index finger out and I allow my single to wrap around the commercial yarn and then while when I do that what I'm doing is just allowing my commercial yarn to wrap around the single and here I go now by altering the angle of the single I can create all sorts of different textures so if I bring it out to a three o'clock angle you see I get a far more condensed spiral which can look really nice and if I bring it down to a five o'clock angle I get a far more shallower spiral and that can also look very nice now just to create some little difference we can roll our commercial around on our um, single and then we can allow the single to wrap around and then we could push it up and then roll our commercial again that's what you get, uh, get is almost like a little beehive um, or a little coil there which can look really stunning in weaving so we will just continue to ply this yarn you notice every time I do this I'm actually just rolling my commercial yarn onto my single just so that it um, keeps them nice and uh, even and stops them moving up and down the commercial yarn so we'll continue doing this and then we'll also show you taking it off because I want you to see how much twist oh look we're coming up to a nice little thick bit here that could look really nice in a, a little bit of a beehive and oh also this part here look at that that's lovely we'll just let this one roll itself it's almost like a little unicorn she can get some really lovely effects and notice the colors aren't going to be muddied the colors are going to be lovely and stay open and if because you're just plying on a commercial yarn which isn't competing with your single I tend to choose a commercial yarn that's slightly darker in color because the darkness of that color will recede and not compete with the colors in the single 
So I've just wound this yarn onto the midi noddy and tied it off. And you can see how it's um, how it's coiled. But what I really wanted you to see was the energy that is in this yarn. Um, basically because you've plied it back onto a commercial yarn. So your single has really nothing to rest against. When you ply two spun singles together and they come together, they rest in each other. Whereas this single has only a light commercial yarn to rest against and it's dominant. So it's really um, coiling. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge it into some quite hand hot water, but yeah, quite hand hot. And you will find then that the cotton and linen core that we've, uh, or commercial yarn that we've spun against will accept the twist and the yarn will relax and become balanced. So I just wanted to thank you all for uh, joining me for these, uh, for these classes and um, I hope that you've really um, gained some useful information for your spinning. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, you'll uh, have my mobile number and of course you can contact me via email. So I wish you all the best and happy spinning. Thank you.